The Vivo V35G has finally launched in South Africa and it is no doubt one of the best smartphones in its range. Inside of its premium textured box you'll find the phone itself, a silicon case, an 8 amp charging cable and an 80 watt flash charge charging block. As I mentioned at the start, the device just landed here in SA and it only comes in one variant with 12 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage. So its asking price of 19,999 Rand is rather justified for that amount of storage space. That amount of storage is certainly needed when you consider its flagship like camera setup with features that you don't typically see in smartphones. And it all starts with its very unique camera module design. There's a 2.5D glass lens covering all of its sensors and below that sits a one piece cloud step design which houses the new Aura light system. Both of these modules sit on top of a metal island which features a silver metal bezel which has undergone a diamond cutting technique. The Aura light itself is now 19 times larger and 50 times softer than a standard flash. It can now intelligently adjust brightness based on the subject's distance and makes use of smart color temperature adjustment which can be adjusted to a cool or warm light and can even be set to auto which allows the camera system to automatically decide which brightness and temperature levels best suit that specific scene. Inside the actual lens sits three cameras which includes a 2 megapixel depth sensor, a 50 megapixel 1 in 1.55 inch sized Omnivision OV50e main camera with OIS and Vivo's own made camera bionic spectrum for enhanced color accuracy as well as a 50 megapixel 1 in 2.76 inch sized isocell JN1 ultra wide sensor with a 119 degree field of view. This ultra wide camera takes incredible photos whether in high resolution mode or bin down photo mode and the color adaptive border watermark which changes color based on the scene is a nice touch. The flagship main sensor takes stunning photos as well with a set of 50 megapixels or bin down 12.5 megapixels and it can even take two times lossless zoom photos. It can zoom in further as well all the way up to 20 times digital zoom but this camera system is all about portrait photography which it does phenomenally well. There's a portrait video mode as well but it's not really needed when the main 4k video mode already offers superb natural depth and of course recording regular video while walking around comes out more than decent too. The ultra wide camera produces great video but it's limited to just 1080p resolution and while the main camera offers 60fps video recording, 4K30 seems to be the sweet spot. The ultra wide camera struggles to brighten up video at night even when using the Aura light but this is usually the case with all smartphones when it comes to ultra wide video in low lit situations. The main camera on the other hand produces very good video at night with minimal noise grain thanks to the Aura light brightening things up. The Aura light is especially useful when recording videos of a human subject in a dark scene and bokeh video is more than acceptable aside from some lens flare. Lens flare is still apparent when using the main video mode but the Aura light certainly breathes different life when adjusting it from cool to warm. The Aura light is even more noticeable when taking photos at night which completely changes up how a scene feels and I was more than impressed with how two times portrait mode shots came out at night. The ultra wide and main cameras result in color rich photos when night mode is enabled and while night mode is available even at the max zoom things are a tad out of place. There is also a super moon mode which takes fantastic snaps of the moon all the way up to 20 times zoom and there's an astro mode too which helps make all the stars in the sky shine bright. The V30 produces extremely good photos and videos in any lighting condition thanks to that new Aura light but now it's time to shift our focus to its head turning design. You can pick the device up in either noble black or waving aqua which is actually an exclusive color for South Africa and Pakistan. I have the waving aqua variant which is made up of a greenish blue color shift that features a water ripple pattern. This is achieved by integrating thousands of tiny magnetic particles which imitates the shimmering of sunlight on the ocean surface. The backplate is made from multi-layered tempered glass which curves into the reinforced plastic side frames that flow into the aluminum alloy corners of the device. The V30 comes in at just 7.45 millimeters thick and weighs in at just 186 grams 
making it the slimmest smartphone to house a 5000 mAh battery and the cherry on top is that it has an IP54 certification which protects it from dust and splashing water. The premium 3D curved screen is protected by Scott Alpha glass and the bezels wrapping around the display are extremely thin. There's a tiny punch hole notch at the top center of its screen which houses an impressive 50 megapixel 1 in 2.76 inch sized ISOCELL JN1 ultra wide selfie camera. This is identical to the ultra wide sensor on the back of the phone, but this one has a 92 degree field of view. So as you would expect, wide angled photos come out almost picture perfect, whether taken in high resolution or bin down mode. Things come out just as great when cropped in at 1x, and while edge detection isn't perfect in portrait mode, the shallow depth of field is excellent. What's up guys, this is Technic recording a 4K 30 frames per second video on the brand new Vivo V30 5G. Let me know your thoughts on the video quality as well as the microphone quality. 4K selfie video is a must for a 2024 smartphone, so it's good to see it included here at both focal lengths. And while there is a selfie bokeh video mode option as well, it's unfortunately capped at 1080p resolution. Selfie video comes out more than acceptable at night with bokeh video looking slightly brighter, and it's the same case when recording selfie video at its widest field of view. Taking selfie photos at night had me extremely impressed. It's nice to see that there is also an aura screen light for different temperature effects just like we saw with the back cameras and its portrait shots come out with near perfect edge detection when taking selfie portraits at night. Having a flagship sensor as a selfie camera is truly a vlogger's dream but now it's time for us to dive into that flagship display. It's a large 6.78 inch sized curved AMOLED display with a high screen resolution that boasts 453 pixels per inch has a 10-bit color depth which can show up to 1 billion colors and supports HDR10, HDR10+, and Widevine L1 content. It has a 120Hz refresh rate which can dynamically adjust between 60, 90, and 120 frames per second and it also features an impressive 300Hz touch sampling rate. What is more impressive however is that the V30 can reach an insane peak brightness of 2800 nits and a maximum overall brightness of 1200 Nits. When it comes to software, the device is running FunTouch OS 14, skinned over Android 14, and since this is fully fledged global software, of course all of Google's goodies are included. But the V30 has something else up its sleeve, that being an SGS certification for 50 months of guaranteed fluency, which means that the Vivo V30 has been optimized so well between its software and hardware that your user experience will remain smooth and fluid for more than 4 years which is in line with Vivo's 4-year battery health warranty on its massive 5000mAh battery which can be charged up fully in just 48 minutes thanks to its extremely fast 80 watt wide charging speeds and there's no need to worry about overheating since Vivo have now included an ultra large smart cooling system which should keep all of its hardware components happy. This includes 512 gigs of UFS 2.2 storage, 12 gigs of LPDDR4X RAM, which can be extended by an additional 12 gigs, and of course the new 4 nanometer run Snapdragon 7 Gen 3 CPU. All of these specs lead to more than impressive benchmark scores across multiple different benchmark apps, and of course this hardware also translates to a fantastic gaming experience. Genshin Impact is a very graphically demanding game when setting all of its graphical settings to the max, which is exactly what I have done here, and we managed a frame rate of over 40 FPS most of the time with barely any stutters. The V30 also squeezes in Bluetooth 5.4, NFC, dual sim 5G, Wi-Fi 6, a USB 2.0 Type-C port, decent haptic feedback, and a single downfiring speaker. There may only be one speaker, but it still packs in quite a punch. The Vivo V30 5G is one of the most competitive smartphones to enter into the South African market. It performs like a champion and is kept cool thanks to its new cooling system, has a large battery with fast charging, a colorful and bright display, an impressive flagship selfie camera, a very capable back camera system, and it looks absolutely stunning. Let me know your thoughts on Vivo's latest V-series device in the comment section down below. This is Technic and I'll catch you in the next one.